Hey everyone, Mr. Paku Paku back. After taking a long absence, I'm sorry about that guys. Uh, there's been a lot of things going around in my personal life lately. Uh, too many weddings for me to attend. A lot of job interviews going by. I'm looking for a better job, so you know, my absence on YouTube is reasonable. I am also not showing my face today only because my room is under renovation. I just bought new shelving moved around in the bookcase uh, all my stuff is on the floors um, so instead of showing you my face talking in front of a blank wall I am showing you an emulated gameplay video that I've done just playing Super Street Fighter 2 for the Super Nintendo and it's only fitting that I do this now for this kind of topic now there's been a lot of controversy going on between Gamergate and game journalism uh, honestly, it hasn't piqued my interest to talk or research about it, um, but one topic that has been popping up uh, left and right for the f past few weeks is a topic on emulation and repro carts. Is it okay to do? Is it okay to download? The pros and cons? Why we shouldn't? You know, a lot of people have their different opinions and stances on it, but this is where this is where I come in. Um, I grew up in the NES era, and even then, you know, there's been piracy on NES games, or even Windows and DOS games, where you just put the floppy drive in, and there's actual machines that can copy it, uh, one for one. Or heck, if you were if you knew what you were doing back in the Windows 95 era, you could just pop in a CD-ROM or a, or a series of floppy disks, copy them onto the hard drive and play it off that. No, there was no prote copyright protection, there was none of that. Or if there was, it was very easy to crack. Now as far as Super Nintendo goes and Nintendo games and Genesis games, I am not sure of the process of how that happened back in the day. However, at the height of it all, I remember seeing the FBI, um, Sega, Nintendo, um, and even the movie companies such as Sony and Paramount all joining forces to stop piracy. They would crack down on the people from other countries who are copying and distributing. And for a while, emu emulation or emulating games and piracy of movies and music it it's been um, what's the word it's just been around and you know it, it gets continued there's just continual continue continued support I'm sorry continue continued support on uh, cracking down and you know I believe that that's right things shouldn't be copied especially when um, they are readily available especially for a reasonable price I mean yes video games has gone up you know when I when I bought video games on my own I would usually go for a forty dollar game maybe fifty dollars if I had the extra cash and nowadays games start off at sixty bucks a pop and Yes, it is much, but it is a different time. But that still doesn't give it a right for people to burn these games. Alright, so that's the stance of current gen consoles, such as, you know, the Xbox 360 or the PS4, uh, the Nintendo Wii. Now, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say, 
that I have never pirated these games. But if you've seen my past coll if people that know me have seen my past collections, they know I collect video games. I am part collector, part gamer. Uh, I used to have a buttload of games from every system. Even if I didn't own the system, I had a buttload of video games uh, that I just wanted to collect, whether it was for um, whether it was for whether it was for money purposes or whether it was just games that were my childhood that I couldn't find anymore. But yeah, I bought I bought games. I'm not gonna say here that I never pirated a, pirated a game or that I never downloaded a ROM, especially one that I didn't own. But that's just me. That's just what I did. I don't encourage it. If that's what you, if, you, if that's what you think the message is, um, I'm trying to portray here. I don't, I don't support piracy, uh, especially when people make money off of it. Now, if that's something you want to do on your own, you're at your own risk. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to lecture anyone. But as far as someone who makes money off someone else's work. And I think that's why the Retron 5, I believe, is getting so much heat. Because it's not the fact that they are using emulation, they are using someone else's work. They're making someone else's, they're using someone else's work for their own profit. They didn't give credit to the people who made these emulators. They didn't ask for their permission or license them or you know, offer a piece of the pie, even though they probably wouldn't take money, the fact of the matter is that you use their work for your own game and don't even credit them. But going back to the topic, as far as emulating current gen systems or emulating uh, systems that are still on that are still in production, that's when I take the stance of it's wrong. And the reason why I say why I say that is because uh, let's say a game like Halo 4, okay? If some guy goes to GameStop and buys all their copies of Halo 4, let's say he ends up buying 10 games, holding on to it, maybe it'll go up into the future. Who knows? That guy isn't gonna make a dent in the market. All GameStop has to do is call their supplier, call the distributor, and say, Hey, I need three more copies of Halo 4. I need four more copies of Halo 4. If some guy goes and buys 20 copies of Madden 25 or the new Madden 15, again, all GameStop or Walmart or Target has to do is call their distributor and order some more. Those are easy games to find. I mean there are a few exceptions where the current gen consoles such as the Wii, especially the Wii and the Wii U have exclusive games that have that are on limited run. But you could still find them and people are still producing them. Maybe at a slow rate but it's still under production. So, it doesn't make sense to me, I mean, now that I'm older, that people can brag about having a burnt collection of Xbox 360 games when maybe 60% of games are now less than $10. I mean, come on, I just bought Batman Arkham Asylum for 10 bucks used. If I decided I wanted it new, it's probably 20 bucks at Walmart. Not a big deal. You know, and it's a, it's, it's a good game, it's a quality game, and you could still find it. No problem. Now, when it comes to the older, the retro games, I don't see anything wrong with it. And the reason for that is, in today's standards, in today's time, you cannot find 
let's say a Hagane for Super Nintendo, it's hard to find a Dragon's Fury on the Sega Genesis. Heck, I can't even find a hard copy of Truxton. If I did, it goes on eBay for 40 bucks. Loose. Now, it's not the price to me that, you know, that sets it back. It's just the fact that, do I really want this game? Do I really want to own it? Especially for 40 bucks for a game that's almost 20 years old. You know, it, it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough uh, and subjective, subjective uh, topic. But the reason why I, I, su I support emulation when it comes to the retro gaming scene is because even though you have the $200 in your pocket to buy Earthbound, even though you have the $100 to buy Chrono Trigger, you're still competing against other people who want that same game. I mean, you can, you can press your luck and go to flea markets or your mom and pop shop that sells video games and who won't know any better but that's a long wait just to find a game like Earthbound. I know the the pawn-like video game shops here, they get Earthbound every so often. And every time they get it, every time it's there, I don't have the money to buy it. Surprise, surprise. I don't have the hundred dollars that they're asking for. So what's the next best thing? I could I could go on eBay, but not everyone does eBay. I go on Craigslist, but not everyone goes on Craigslist. Not everyone is willing to go that distance to get a game that isn't in production anymore. So, I mean, I kind of feel bad playing Street Fighter, Super Street Fighter 2, emulated on the Super Nintendo, and I'm showing I'm showing you this video. But the difference with that is I actually have this game, both Super Nintendo and Super Famicom versions. So maybe on my end it's legal that I do have this and I could do what I want, technically. But what about those kids who live in the middle of nowhere who don't have a mom and pop shop to uh, rely on? I mean... What about those kids who, you know, just can't afford a hundred fifty dollar game when a 3DS is a hundred bucks? So you're gonna buy a game that's twenty years old when you can own a 3DS and maybe get a copy of that game that you want. And that, that's the funny thing too. A lot of a lot of people argue, well, the 3DS has a bunch of NES and SNES games. The Wii U shop uh, is producing them. But there's a lot of games that they are not coming out with. Sure, you could find the Castlevanias, the Kid Icaruses, the Mario Karts. Sure, you know, five bucks a piece on digital software. Okay, but there's games like I said, like Hagane, Little Samson, for once. Um, those Flintstones games, the Ducktales games, the Chip and Dale games. Those aren't being released every day. Granted that there is a revision and a remake of DuckTales. The same cart, the same game that was in the NES cart isn't being reproduced. So, you don't have a 3DS, you don't have a Wii U, you have a Nintendo, and you have a computer. You really want to play DuckTales, or you really want to play Chippendale's Rescue Rangers Part 3. The mom and pop shop doesn't have it. eBay is asking, the sellers on eBay is asking for a ridiculous amount for that game. What are you gonna do? Of course, you're gonna you're gonna download the ROM. It's the only way at this at this uh, moment and at this time. You know. I mean, sure. Uh, I can look up the price and maybe maybe I can shell out thirty to fifty dollars, but again, that's just me. That's just you. Not everyone is willing to spend fifty dollars on a game that's, like I said, twenty years old. I mean, heck, some I know some people who won't spend fifty dollars on a game that's three days old. I have friends who won't play Destiny until there's a price drop. 
So they'll wait two years just for it to go down in price. And another point I want to make is a lot of the purists that say, oh, the emulation scene is, is bad, uh, it's stealing, and technically it's true, but in the past five years, how many cases have you heard of someone like Panasonic, Atari, Nintendo, Sega? How many times have you heard any of them chase down somebody who is downloading games from 1995? I don't know anyone who has got caught downloading Donkey Kong Country 2 and going to jail for 20 years for it. Then there's the argument, oh well, when it comes to movies and music, people get caught all the time. And that's correct. What the difference between movies and video games is that movies and video movies and music, excuse me, are still being produced by the same company that holds their rights. It's not like Nintendo is still making NES carts for people like us to enjoy. They're done with it. Long, long time ago. Even when it comes to N64 games, long time ago it's been done with. But you can still find brand new copies of The Last Dragon for five bucks at a Walmart. You could still find the Bee Gees greatest hits even though those songs are from the 70s being re-released by either a company who holds their rights or you know whoever whoever recorded them back in the 70s so it doesn't fall under that same category no one holds these rights to these games that right now there's no patent on the system oh I could be wrong but if if someone is holding the rights to an NES game and they know that the emulation scene is stronger than ever um, they're certainly not going after people for it that's for sure there's emulation sites going up left and right I mean when I first started doing this when it's around when the Super Nintendo already died and the Nintendo 64 was on its way to to stoppage because I believe the Nintendo wanted to move on to the GameCube um, there was only a few sites, a few public sites, maybe two or three to get your games at. I checked today, just a quick Google search, and there are so many sites that are hosting um, ISOs up to the Xbox. You know, and it's kind of borderline for me when it comes to pirating Xbox and GameCube games, only because they're still easily available to a certain degree. But again, nobody is producing them anymore. Nobody has rights, or if they do have the rights, they're not using those rights. Uh, there's nothing in production of it. Uh, so basically all the money that you're throwing at those games are going to either the, <coughs> the person who owns the disc or the store you are contributing to. Uh, the dollars that you're throwing throwing around isn't going to Nintendo's pockets, so they could care less, really. So as far as emulation goes, when it comes to the retro games, it's a it's a yes for me. Uh, I, I I cannot be that person who will um, have that morality to be a purist when it comes to owning the original game, owning everything you, you can find. Because that just stops a player from that just stops a gamer from finding out new things. I mean, yeah, they could always go on YouTube and search Hagani gameplay, but you're gonna want to play it. And how can you play a game like Hagane, which is super rare even in Japan's uh, market? Really rare game to find. And just because you don't believe in emulating games, you're going to tell a person that they shouldn't go and try it, go and play it somehow, any way they can. Again, it's not like they want to play Halo 4 and just can't afford it, even though it's a $10 game now. You know? We're talking about games that are have, have been out of production since 1998. You know, get over it get over that purist mentality when it comes to retro games because 
Emu to be honest, emulation is the one is the one source that's keeping it alive. You know, God forbid that some of these collectors on YouTube that their house catches on fire. You know, what happens to all those games, those rare games that they've been finding? You know, what happens to all of that? You know, an emulation right now is the, sh the surefire way where the future generation of gamers can try out the retro games. Even my nephew, who's only 13 years old. You know, he, didn't own, he doesn't own a Nintendo. He never did. He owns a Wii U. He owns an Xbox 360. But if he didn't emulate a game like Pokemon Blue, he would never know what Pokemon Blue or what Pokemon is. He didn't watch the TV show when he was younger. He would never he would have never known the joys of playing Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2 and 3, finding out the secrets. He would never had that joy if all, if all he kept hearing was, well, you should only buy the game, you should only look for the hard copies of the game because emulation is wrong. Granted that those games are as common as a $5 bill, the principle remains the same when it comes to every game that is emulated. You know, maybe he would have never found out what Ninja Gaiden was. You know, for me, the way I found out about Street Fighter was there. I, I ran into an arcade machine in a local pizza shop. You know, my nephew and his generation doesn't have uh, privileges like that anymore. Sure, you can go to Dave and Buster's and check out the arcade games there, but what what arcade games are in Dave and Buster's that you can get in the home console? Ghost Squad, Time Crisis, House of the Dead Four, maybe. And that's and that's where the limit and that's their limit. That's where it ends for them. For me, I got to find out about Super Mario Brothers on the NES, and I never knew they had an arcade version until I actually went to an actual arcade that doesn't exist anymore. Now when it comes to repro carts, the only gripe I have about repro carts is that you have to destroy a game to play a new game or a newer game to you. That's where it gets, that's where it kind of draws a line, or where it gets frowned upon. But I mean, hey, there's games like Sweet Home, I believe it's called. It's one of Capcom's, um, well, not Capcom, but it's what inspired Resident Evil, or the development of Resident Evil. The game was not released outside of Japan, yet there's these guys who translate the game so you can play it as a ROM. Or there's people who translate the game, add a new battery, put it on the NES cart, just so you can have the joys of playing it on a console. What I don't like about repro carts, besides that, is the people who uh, make copied games, just like Xbox 360 game. They co they make copies they make copies of these games, like Little Samson and all those rare games, and pass it on as real. That's that's a really bad practice, especially if you're trying to fool a collector, trying to get top dollar. Now, as far as I know, the going rate for repro carts goes anywhere between forty to eighty dollars. Whether it's NES to uh, SNES, I'm not even sure if they make N64 repro carts, but I've seen the work that they do, uh, the the work that these guys put into it. And it's really hard work because it's all manual labor. There's no easy, there's no easy way to do it. There's a lot of soldering involved. There's a lot of programming involved. So when it comes to paying them for the work, not not the game itself, then I'm all right with that. But when you try to fool the consumer that's saying it's a real, it's the real deal, no, that's not cool, not at all. So again. Emulation on retro games, okay by me. Uh, pirating current gen consoles where there is still money to be made for the companies so they can produce more games, not okay. Repro carts, okay by me as long as you're not selling it 
trying to pass it off as a real deal or overpricing your work. Like I said, it could go anywhere from $30 to $80 depending on the game you want, depending on the translation and version you want. But other than that, it should not exceed $100 plus dollars. Well, that's it for me today, guys. Thanks for listening to my video blog. Hopefully I'll have more time to do more, and hopefully I'll get some subscribers. Alright, this is Mr. Pakupaku signing out.